Hello, this is Tim Wilmot speaking and welcome to my watercolour demo of a town or city scene and this one includes buildings, uh, people, some vehicles of various shapes and sizes and in this watercolour I'll be covering a few watercolour te techniques like laying down a wash, wetting wet, blending colours, negative painting, um, painting around figures and some dry brush strokes as well. So here's my reference photo, a Spanish town in southern Spain and uh, pedestrian crossing coming towards us and various people at the other, other end there. So off with the initial outline sketch and I'm using a 3B pencil, quite a soft pencil. The paper I'm using is my normal Saunders Waterford, rough, rough texture, and it's 300 grams in weight. And it's secured down with some masking tape, normal sort of DIY masking tape around the side. I'm painting on a, I'm drawing on a, I'm painting on a Corex board, lightweight Corex board. Uh, it could be anything. So uh, here we are doing the outline of some trees here quite loose nothing too accurate just meant to be some guidelines for the picture there we are popped in the reference photo again there just to help us along the way first people I'm trying to, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to think of not making them too um, ordered, so sort of random, not, not too equally spaced, shall I say. And uh, to some extent, some, although it's going to be difficult, having them all in a row at one end of the zebra crossing, but trying to make some just a little bit smaller than others just to introduce a little bit of variety rather than looking like a, a regimented group of people coming towards us. And now just drawing in the shadow down the left hand side, quite a deep shadow there. And it's going to be a bit blurry as it comes towards us then, a bit of street furniture on the left hand side there. And now over to the right, the curve of the road there, first vehicle, get in that curve of the road. So loosely drawing in now the lines of the zebra crossing or pedestrian crossing. And again, try not to make it dead centre in the picture, try not to make it too symmetrical, then deciding deciding here which are going to be the, the dark lines and the lighter areas. Just a few architectural details there, some little line marking the uh, floor level, different levels of building, back to the island there in the middle of the road. I think we're nearly there. Pop in another car, just peeping behind that main one. Obviously a little bit smaller, but a, a similar roof height. So that's pretty much the drawing done. And now for the first wash. So my 
palette here today is my my normal one uh, with the colors from the bottom right we've got cadmium yellow cadmium orange light red cadmium red alizarin crimson ultramarine blue cobalt blue sort of almost in the middle there cerulean blue good for skies i've just noticed a bit of white gouache from a previous painting somehow it's lodged itself into that bottom palette uh, continue the colors we've got uh, viridian green yellow ochre and then three from the top is burnt sienna burnt umber and then neutral tint so excuse the little bit of glare there on the picture because of the angle I'm trying to get the optimum angle of uh, the camera to to the picture so you can see most of what I'm doing. So I've just gone in with the sky and just a faint bit of darker darker wash for the background buildings nothing too nothing too stark what I always forget is dirting up the pedestrian crossing first of all not make it too white not make it too too unif uniform and pretty uh, most, most zebra most pedestrian crossings if they're well used they're they're dirty and sometimes you you just don't see them as bold white lines there they're very much uh, got tire marks tire marks over them and bits chipped out of them so back to the background buildings a little bit darker for this left hand one so a bit of yellow ochre there and just very loosely painting in just, just we're just really covering up the paper we don't want any white marks on that left hand side it's going to be the darkest area of the picture back to that middle background tall building there getting a bit thicker so I'm doing this while the wash is still quite moist hasn't had a chance to dry yet and adding in that same cooler wash at the base of the building there I'm using an a Skoda mop brush it's a it's a it is a, a synthetic brush it's not um, natural a natural uh, squirrel mop so it's it's quite an affordable brush a uh, very good one from a Skoda it actually has a lot of properties of a synthetic brush and uh, quite a large size this one I think it's 16 or 17 16 or 18 something like that just carefully painting around some of those figures again you don't need to be too accurate here because they're in the distance can't really discern body shapes at that kind of distance. Right, right hand building. Go a bit darker for the base. Ultramarine blue there, burnt sienna. A bit more burnt sienna. just lightly bringing down the paint to that horizon level a bit darker there just keep that in the corner so it's not too not too moist just coming down 
over the tops of the vehicles just using the point of the brush, this mop brush has got a very good point on it just gradually dragging the paint down well I've still got paint in the brush and while the rest of the wash is still moist I just dabbed it around there just in the darker areas grab a bit more cool go back into that background apartment block bit of a warmer colour for that one And then on the right hand building there, same colour, a bit warmer coming towards the foreground. We'll add in a bit more detail into that later on. Now just coming in around those figures again, just a few touches. deciding what to do now. Let's start with the road surface. So actually where I came down the wash at the back at the background it's not too wet and because the paper's quite level it's not um, hasn't come down the page too much. So that this foreground, this this bottom half of the picture. Gonna start off fairly light and then get darker as I come towards the foreground. So I'm just constantly mixing in different colours there in that bottom well. Trying to get it right. That's going to be the highlight of that uh, bit of street furniture in the middle of the road there. So making up a darker wash now. with the normal ultramarine blue and burnt sienna so being careful here trying to think where the pedestrian crossing starts I've still got a fairly good point on this mop brush so that's the first stripe right at the back there also as they come towards us the, the gaps are going to be wider, the bands will be wider. Nice and dark on the left hand side. It'll probably go a bit darker than that for the shadows. So I'm holding the brush pretty much towards the end of the the handle. And the road surface is pretty rough, it's not too smooth, so I don't need to be too precise with the laying down of this wash. In fact in fact rougher the rougher the better. So mixing again, making it a bit thicker bit of 
Valors are in crimson going in there. So I'm just following those lines that I made in my outline sketch. Coming down the right hand side making sure I go over to the very edge of the paper on top of the masking tape so I don't leave any nasty white gaps around the side. Nearly at the bottom now. still colors in crimson not green blue now the zebra crossing needs to be messed up a little bit so looking back at my reference photo I can see bits chipped off it lines running across in random directions so doing this again with a brush but you could you could use the end of your finger or a bit of paper towel just smudge it across do a bit of splattering across it as well would be a good idea So there's a bit more of a, a bit more water in the brush at this stage. Just trying to lose that right hand edge there. It's actually quite at the top there you can't really discern where the white stripes meet the road something to that person there. So I'm standing back now just seeing what to do next. Letting that wash dry a little bit. So just splattering in some clear water now. If you judge it right, get the timing right, just when it's not so wet that it's too moist, but still at that damp stage. Sometimes if you just look at the surface of the water against some light, you can just see it dulling off. And I've got a, a synthetic brush here with some water just dragging in some strokes there. And it sort of parts parts the pigment and you get these darker, dark areas either side. Quite a quite a nice watercolour effect. So now just to speed up the process, I'm getting the hairdryer out, 
making sure everything is 100% dry. And with the uh, with the masking tab, I made sure it was well and truly stuck to the paper. Otherwise, using the hair dry here with if you don't put that masking tape down really tight, um, of course using the hairdryer it can all, all come apart. So uh, I made sure that the masking tape was pressed down firmly. Just checking that it's dry now. The finger test. And now I've got a slightly different mop brush. It's got longer hairs, this one. Very, very soft uh, brush, this one. It's a uh, Raphael brush. Raphael is the, is the manufacturer. So nice and soft for the background there, not too dark. So I think the, uh, the background buildings there need to be just a little bit darker than they were. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. This right hand building. So I'm just holding the brush there to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Trying to, as best I can, make it fairly parallel to the right hand edge of the paper. And then, as I'm coming down, I'm trying to observe a bit of perspective there. A bit darker as we come down to the base. We'll have a, a vehicle over there on the right hand side. Just slightly in the distance, it's going to be a little bit darker than the foreground, that, that uh, the car next to it, to the left of it. Over the top of that car. Just complete the top. Leave a little leave a little highlight there so that's a bit of light red now burnt sienna ultramarine blue Just mix it again and see what it looks like. This brush is still fairly moist. Haven't had to pick up any water. So now the left hand building is a lot darker. Start at the top, work our way down to the bottom. A 
just trying to think where that tree is going to be. And also where there be gaps in the tree. So the tree's not just one solid mass, which wouldn't look too realistic. No. The extension to those shops, the front there, going over the go over to the corner of the street. Like a sort of veranda in a way. And there was some railings along the top of it. So a little bit darker again as I come down towards the base of the building. Bit of red in there. Cadmium red. Now, I've got a very old mop brush here that I've cut some random jagged edges to it, to the to the point of it. So it's very good for doing foliage. And I'll start off with that background tree first of all. A bit of cad yellow and a blue. So it's still moist in the background there a little bit. A bit darker towards the base. Needs a bit more blue. that comes down to the tops of the cars so picking up the bigger mop brush again Let's continue that background building again. Nice and dark. And then I'm painting around those cars. I'll actually be in a little bit of shadow, so I'll need to go over those again, make them darker. Thinking if I can introduce a few more people here. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. So we're starting to go around those figures now. Creating their form over the heads and shoulders. Of course, when we go into those figures, some will be light, some will be darker. We'll add in clothing details and colours shortly. And I'm trying to think where that 
car is behind. Back to the figures. coming down the side of them, leaving a few little highlights there for interest. Bit of burn umber there. And I'm not too worried about the legs. So I'm sort of in a random way going across now not bothering to paint round legs they'll be lost in lost in those shadows now we're starting to form the shadow as it's coming out from the corner of the shops there a nice angle going right across to the left hand side So change my brush now, just add in some clear water along the where the shadow, where the shadow's edge is going to be, some clear water with a very clean mop brush and then just let that dry a bit. So that's going to give me a bit of a a blurred edge there. It's not so it's not so sharp. Around the cars. These shadows are quite blue going across the road here. So a bit of a, a contrast with the, the warm buildings. And then that central centre of the road there, that street furniture, that blob in the middle, just catching the light on the right hand side. And then bring the shadows down to meet that clear water. So not be so well defined, so it's sort of bleeding a little bit, giving me a, a blurred edge. Just meet those, drag those lines out there just to, as there were sort of layers, layers in that middle reservation. Now, cars. few car details, windscreens on the base of the car. Generally the windscreens are darker unless they're catching some bright sunlight they're darker than the the actual car itself. Now picking up some neutral tint now and a bit of ultramarine blue for the darker shadows under the car. Burnt sienna, neutral tint, let's make it nice and dark. a little test there looks okay so 
the shadows are those darker shadows they're mixing with the the car wash So, time for some foliage again. Cadmium yellow. Could be any bright yellow. Ultramarine blue. This is for that main tree. And nice and random. Going around those little pieces that are left. Picking up a bit more ultramarine blue as I come down, make it darker. Accidentally picked up a bit of cobalt there. Yeah, add in some neutral tint. A bit of a shortcut to get a getting a darker tone. So a few tree trunks. back to that first tree still still a little bit moist while I've still still got that brush add a few details into the right hand building those parked cars add in a lighter wash there, it's just bleeding a little bit into the shadows now let's get some nice and dark stuff neutral tint, again I got that Raphael, Raphael mop brush I'm going to do the <coughs> shadows under the cars here. And again, with the same brush under that middle reservation, that middle island. And some windscreen details for those cars. Just deciding what to do with this one. with a, a synthetic brush that's been dipped in water, it's a little bit moist, going in to take a few edges away, flick a little bit of water on it as well, especially in, the, especially in those trees there while it's still moist. Drag and flick it down, it down in a downwards direction and if you've got a little bit of a slope, you can get some quite pleasing effects there to foliage. And 
I've got a sword brush here which is very good for making fine lines and I've just made a darker colour Allers and Crimson, Cobalt, Ultramarine this is going to be shadow coming right across the street here from a lamp post now using a smaller synthetic brush here let's start doing a bit more with those people and painting in their faces first. I generally start off with people painting their faces first. I've painted around them initially and then going with their faces and with the zebra crossing obviously they're, they're all facing us um, but with a group of people I'd have some people going away, some people coming from the side, some people coming towards you but here they're all coming towards us now. Their top, some of the tops, a bit of cerulean blue there. Add in a, a light shirt, so that could be some shadows. A bit of yellow ochre for the next one. Let's decide which one, that right hand, that right hand one there. darker colour just picking up off anything I have in the palette just a little bit darker on that left hand figure cobalt blue pick up a bit of dark stuff and this figure there added a few stripes neutral tint still with this fairly small synthetic brush not too much water just think about a jacket or something for that right hand person there so left hand side right hand side might bleed a little bit into the the very right figure there doesn't matter so pick up a little bit of dark color now add in some dark shadows under the cars they're still just a little bit moist so the paint's going to travel up a little bit give a, a soft edge to that and let's rough up this road surface a bit add in a few dots random random dots a bit more sometimes I find where there's a little bit of white paper just put a bit of shadow next to it don't be afraid to scrub something out of it, it's not right. Now some tailgate lights for the cars, the parked cars. Cadmium red. Again it doesn't need to be too precise. a bit of neutral tint get in this tall lamp post so it's fairly dry paint not too much moisture on the brush and a fairly steady hand almost in one stroke down a bit tricky doing the shadow first and then 
and then the pose. Sometimes it's easier to do the pose first and the shadow afterwards, but I, I've done it the opposite way around there. And well, I've still got that dry brush had in a few little windscreen details there of a background car. I'm just mucking about now really. Try not trying to be conscious not to overdo too much detail particularly on the right hand side. That's if you like just a little bit should be out of focus there really on the right hand side. Now pick up my rough brush again. And this time let's do some tire marks across the pedestrian crossing. They're going to curve around, follow the curve of the road there. Does help a little bit with the perspective, so not not too hard, nice and light. So the cars there. Back to my small brush. Let's get in a a sign or lamp post or something there, just in the middle of the road. So I think the painting is nearly done now. Let's speed up the drying process with my little hair dryer. This is where if, if the paper's buckled a little bit it'll just flatten out as well. Revert to flatness. Moving it around, it won't take too long. This just do a bit of testing. Dry that top bit again. So what I'm doing now is making sure it's a hundred percent dry before I go on to some final detail stages, um, the some railings on that uh, first floor, and uh, some highlights we'll put in. So I think that's it. Now I'm picking up my dagger brush again, or it could be a rigger brush. I'm going to be doing the railings very loosely, top bits, and some vertical lines, not painting in all of the railings, leaving a few gaps and just a few lines again just to help perspective.
quite a nice brush to just sort of dance around dance around the picture really putting in different marks going in a bit darker for this that central post again add a bit more definition to it I think it I think it needed a bit more density and a few horizontal lines just giving a bit more form to that central island just some detail, shop detail there on that ground floor and I was in crimson sort of quite darkish red in there so it's fairly dry brush not too much moisture at all cerulean blue, cobalt blue adding a few dabs nice contrast with the previous reds so I'm picking up a bit of white gouache here and just some colour off the, the palette just to make it into a sort of almost like a battleship grey fairly thick paint and that's a few little road signs there or traffic lights on that central post thinking about the highlights now with some pure white gouache straight out of the tube with my smallest brush now tops of that traffic light or sign and then tops of the heads maybe not all of them and just one or two to find some highlights on the shoulders so this is just white gouache straight out of the tube. And you can see it does make quite a difference on a dark, especially on a dark background. And then some, again some shop frontage details just going in behind that sign and coming out the other side tops of the cars that van and then a bit of light hitting that central island So I think that's done. Stand back and look at it from a distance.
So I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video. Well, I'll just put in a few more bits and pieces there. What I've still got some white paint. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, catch me again soon sometime, and the more videos up on my website. Thanks for watching.